Quel nom, s'il vous plaît Monsieur et Madame de Chavigny. Monsieur et Madame de Chavigny. Merci. 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 Uh, quel nom, s'il vous plaît uh, Mr. Chen and Son. Monsieur Chen et Fils. Thank you so much. Thank you, monsieur. Mon commandant. Bonsoir. Bonsoir, commandant. Bonsoir, Bonsoir, monsieur. Bonsoir, monsieur Joubert. Bonsoir. Oh, la charmante enfant. Flatteur. Ah, mais non. Oh, excusez-moi. I'm so sorry. Ah, monsieur Charlie Chen. Jules Etienne Joubert, chef de police de Monaco. I am honored. Honor most neutral. Oh, humbly introduce number one, Sun Lee. Comment vous portez-vous? Oh, that is French, no? Why, yes. Ah, oh, comme c'est gentil. Je suis étonné, monsieur. I am charmed. Oh, please. Rendez-le leur monnaie, idiot. Ce sont de rôles dignitaires. <laughs> Excuse, please. You, you see? He is insult. Faites comme je vous dis. Et vite. A million pardon, monsieur, but I did not know. My compliment. You are my guest. No, but... I insist, and in Monte Carlo, Joubert's word is law. Already you offend by not announcing your arrival in Monaco to me. A humble presence of no more importance than one drop of rain in a uh, cloudburst. Oh, come, come, come. All the world it knows of Charlie Chan, eh? No? Oh, well... Aha, uh -huh, you see? Today I hear you arrive in Monte Carlo. <laughs> Naturellement, I am very anxious you should make my acquaintance. <laughs> so I follow you from hotel to casino. Me voici, here I am. Regard with admiration the masterpiece of all casinos. Perhaps you would like to play a little roulette for Chemin de Père, no? No. Yes, uh, listen, Pop, I've got a great hunch. Our room in the hotel at Nice is 125. I'm 25 years old. This is the 25th of August, and by the Chinese calendar, this is the year 9,325. 25 also amount you borrowed from me last week. I'll pay you back just as soon as I win, Pop. I can't lose at roulette if I play number 25. So perhaps you break the bank with such a system. Gosh, do you think so? I wonder which table I'd better play on. To avoid panic in house, suggest you start attack on smallest bank. Okay, I'll see you later, Pop. Hello, you, you and I. We watch this table where fortunes change hands at, uh, oh, how you say, the flip of the card. La main passe. Mesdames, Messieurs, la banque nous enchaîne. Qui prend la main 50,000 francs. Personne ne dit mieux. La banque est adjugée à 50 000 francs. Marquez vos jeux, Mesdames, Messieurs. Banco, le banco est prêt. Rien ne va plus. Please, may I have a thousand of that? I... I feel lucky. I hope you're right. Make your bet, mademoiselle. Oh, thank you. Now you will witness the most bitter of playing. The man with the bank is Paul Severin. Very clever and very rich. The other one is Victor Karnoff, the great financier. They are the enemies on the bourse as well as in the casino. God, monsieur? No. Monsieur has great confidence. In my own judgment, yes. You're not afraid to draw to a five, are you? You misinterpret caution for fright, Mr. Karnoff. I judge the wiles of my opponent as well as the value of my hand. Ah, back here. I'm afraid you're a bit too reckless, Savarin. 
I find it more exciting than conservatism. It is ever so. The money, it is nothing. They play only to give the insult to each other. Contradiction of old saying, that talk is cheap. Aha, you have said it with a mouthful. Pardon, Madame Carnot, your brother would like to see you in the bar. Thank you. 17, Loire, Imper et Mort. Faites vos jeux, mesdames. Faites vos jeux, messieurs. Faites vos jeux. Les jeux sont faits. Rien ne va plus. 12, Rouge, Père et Mort. Gordon. Did Victor see you come in here? Why, no. He's playing Chemin de Fer with Savarin. What's wrong? I, I've been checking over his securities tonight. $25,000 worth of the metallurgic bonds are missing. Oh. Joan, did you take them? Why, no, no. I, I don't know anything about them. Listen, I want you to be truthful with me. I know you're in trouble, and the bonds might have helped you out. Do you think you can get them back tonight? Tonight? There's a bank messenger from Paris waiting at the house right now. Victor's selling a million dollars worth of metallurgics. This time he's out to wreck Severin. How much time have I? About an hour. Bring them directly to me at the house. I'll handle it from then on. Come on. Keep your chin up. Hard? No, let's see. Look at the box. Everything's ready, Victor. What? Oh, fine, fine. Hello, darling. I'll be with you in a moment. I'm cashing in. Hello, Gordon. Oh, look at all the money the woman has. Well, it's downright indecent. <laughs> so my wealth is not the attraction. Hmm? Uh -huh. Still the girl herself. I, uh, I'll be a little later than I expected tonight. Will you wait for me here? I just took Savarin for five straight hands of Chemin de Fer. Don't gloat, dear. He'll win it back tomorrow. Tomorrow he'll lose a lot more to me than he ever staked at a casino table. Get your wraps, dear. Do you mind going on without me? I'm winning tonight, too, for a change. And I shouldn't walk out on my luck. Well, of course not, darling. See you later. Come on, Gordon. Garçon, my wraps, please. Oui, Madame Cabron. Oh, Pop, I haven't got a cent in my pocket. Rejoice uh, that you still have honorable pen. So, you are now a shareholder in the casino. A chip off ancient block. A venerable grandparent once have large holdings in Fantan House. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh mais oui. <laughs> I am prostrate that you must leave so soon. Well, you see, I'm exhibiting a painting at the Paris Exposition, and we've got to be there for the uh, showing. Ah, oh, monsieur is an artist. Pop says I am, but I'm not so sure. Gosh, I like detective work better than paintings. If paintings as full of imagination as detective work, <laughs> he will be Chinese Rembrandt. <laughs> <laughs> Hotel Imperial, très vite. Oui, madame. En taxi. Ces gens sont mes amis. Si vous apportez le moindre retard à les conduire à Nice, vous entendrez parler de moi. Monsieur le commissaire, Maurice Patachon vous donne sa parole. Ils y seront en un clin d'œil. Bon, bon, bon. bon. It is arranged. If he does not get you to the train at Nissan time, you will let me know. Then I kill him myself, personally. 
Thank you so much. Goodbye, Monsieur. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Joubert. Goodbye. Imbécile, tu sais ce que vous pouvez faire de mieux Un, un instant, monsieur le commissaire, un, un instant. Voilà. Au revoir, monsieur Jouvert. Thanks a lot. Bonne chance. Au revoir. comme danger public. Pardon, monsieur le commissaire, c'est l'essence. Ceux qui la vendent, ce sont des assassins, des bandits. Des émaux. Mais je... Plus d'histoire. Oui. Est-ce que vous me prenez pour imbécile Oui. Ah oh, non. Bonne Benedictine, please. Hello, honey. What's in your mind? Al, I need those bonds. reason you gave them to me. I'm serious. Victor's sending a large shipment of his metallurgic bonds to Paris tonight. I've got to get them back before they're missed. I'm sorry, kid, but I don't believe you. Encore de Bronx. You've got to believe me. Don't you realize what it would mean if he finds out? Sure, you'd forget about it because you're his wife. Nothing doing, baby. Better drink that chew and look as though you need it. Here, I'll give you this bracelet. It's worth more than the bonds. I never touch jewelry, but I would consider cash. Where would I get $25,000 tonight? Forget it then. Good evening, Mrs. Havala. Have there been any calls for me? One moment. I'll inquire of the operator. Just an after, Mrs. Havala. There were no calls, monsieur. Thank you. If I have the cash tomorrow, will you give me back the bonds? I thought you needed them tonight. I'll figure out some way to cover up till I see you tomorrow. Okay. I'll be here. Series G, 18407 to 17. Right? J, 2264 to 74. Correct. Hello, dear. You're back early. How did your luck hold out? I should have left with you. I lost everything. <laughs> you see, you needed my moral support. And financial. But you're busy. I'm going up to bed. That roulette wheel gave me a bit of a headache. All right, darling. Get some sleep. I'll be along later. Sorry your luck went sour, Joan. Oh, it could have been worse. K two seven five five two. Oh, Monsieur Carno, there's a break in the series. You're right. How about this, Gordon? Three of these bonds are missing. Oh, that's funny. I'll uh, I'll look among the extra metallurgics we have in the safe. Perhaps they're among these we haven't checked, Reynolds. Perhaps. Ah, oh, nine one eight three. To 93. Correct. How about it, Gordon? Did you find them? Yes, here they are. Guess I put them on the others by mistake the last time I checked up. 
That finishes our work, doesn't it? We oui, monsieur. I'll tell Ludwig to bring the car around. Well, I, your receipt. Oui, monsieur. He is sending the bonds to Paris tonight. Oui. By plane from Nice. You can bring the car around now, Ludwig. Bien, monsieur. Too sweet. Tell Rambouillet I'll keep in constant touch with him by telephone. Very well. I don't want any slip-ups, understand? Goodbye and good luck. Merci. I'd like to see Savarin's face when he gets the first market reports in the morning. <laughs> eh? Oh, yes, so would I. Well, that's that. I think I'll get a breath of fresh air before turning in. Good night. Good night. Ingrat! Infidèle ingrat! Je ne vis que pour toi! J'achète le meilleur des essences! L'huile la plus pure! Et quand j'ai besoin de toi, Tu m'abandonnes comme une vieille chaussette. It's no use, Pop. We'd better start walking back. Illustrious ancestor once say, destination never reached by turning back on same. Ne, ne perdez pas patience, monsieur. Cela ne durera qu'un instant. Je, je n'oserai pas affronter monsieur le commissaire. Uh, correction, please. Instruct loquacious driver uh, to follow if successful in assembling jigsaw puzzle. Si vous faites l'automobile, nous vous marchez et nous montez avec l'automobile. Comment? Uh, que dites-vous? Je disais, si vous faites l'automobile, Vous nous marchez et nous montez avec l'automobile. Je vous demande pardon, monsieur. Je n'entends pas très bien. J'ai de la poussière dans les oreilles. Que dites-vous? When you get the car fixed, follow us. Oh! Je ne comprends pas. Please. Action speak louder than French. Oh. seem to understand. Uh, a French, a very difficult language. There's another car down there, Pop. Must have been an accident. Uh, Perhaps like own taxi on sit-down strike. There's nobody here. Contradiction, please. Look. That other car. They must have gone for a doctor. Maybe we can help. Uh, touch nothing. Too late for doctor. This man shot to death. Shot? Gee, Pop, I'll bet the chauffeur did it and escaped in that other car. Is possible. No careful attempt to destroy footprints. But why would the chauffeur bother to do that? They'll suspect him anyway. Uh, perhaps not worried about own footprints. Rhinestone suggests presence of lady. Gee, Pop, it's what the French newspapers call a crime passionnel. The woman was probably this man's wife or his sweetheart. She had the chauffeur drive him out here to a lonely spot. Between them, they murdered him and got away together. Please, stop deductions. Also, approaching automobile. Hey, stop! Stop! Vous officiez de la paix? We did. Never mind, come on. There's trouble. I mean, there's been a murder. Over there. We just found it. C'est fou l'étranger, on va lui avoir un accident. Oui, je crois qu'il va falloir les remorquer jusqu'au village. 
this is my father, Charlie Chan. Uh, we were on our way to catch the train to Paris when we found this car and a man in the back seat. Now, we've been investigating, and I've got a theory. Oh, Il est mort. Une balle dans la tête. Comment se fait-il que vous soyez là? Que savez-vous? Uh, je, je vous dirai, uh, nous marchons le long du chemin quand nous avons découvert l'auto et tué l'homme. Quoi? As-tu entendu cela? Oui, ça semble impossible. Vous jurez de dire la vérité? C'est vrai. Au nom de la principauté de Monaco, je vous arrête pour meurtre. Suivez-nous. It's okay, Pop. I fixed everything. Why should those officers arrest us? I told them who we are. Fortunately, assassination of French language, not serious crime. C'est incroyable, Monsieur le Commissaire. Je les ai surpris en flagrant délit. Les gaillards ont résisté, les clés. Mais à la gloire de la police de Monaco, les voilà. Monsieur Chan. So sorry but find Monte Carlo hospitality difficult to escape. Je suis imbécile. Ce sont mes amis. Mais, mais le plus jeune a confessé. Monsieur Lee, what did you tell the officer? Well, I said, uh, nous avons découvert l'auto et tué l'homme. Oh, 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 Monsieur Lee has made this slight mistake. You tell him you discover the auto and you murder the man. <laughs> In future, remember, tongue often hang man quicker than rope. Fou! Idiot! Qu'attendez-vous? Ouvrez la porte contre vous! Je suis désolé, je suis désolé. Je suis désolé, monsieur. Jamais pour je montrer ma personne. I am so sorry. Say, Pop, the train for Paris, we've got to hurry. Train depart from Nice 20 minutes ago. Then you must stay in Monte Carlo for tonight. No. I, I insist. I will send to Nice for your bagage, and you will be my guest at the Imperial Hotel in the finest room with the hot and cold water that runs. But first we go to my office. And the mess. Also, one thing more. There is no trace of missing chauffeur. But in soft earth, near car, Discover this. A woman. Aha! Now we have some life in the case. Cherche la femme. Always at the bottom of trouble is a woman. That's just what I told you, Pop. C'est fantastique. Je ne peux pas y croire. Enfin, merci. We have identified the car. Donnez-moi Monsieur Victor Carnot. Oui. Same gentleman noticed at casino? Unfortunately, yes. Oh, quelle catastrophe. Écoutez, Monsieur Stan. Mademoiselle Fifi Zaza reports the loss of puppy dog. Bien. A doctor has the watch stolen. Bien. A bartender attempts the sale of some bonds and the bank lifts the eyebrows. Bien. But it has to be the great Carnot, in whose automobile is found a man murdered to death. Oh, he will be most unreasonable. Hello? A bonsoir, Monsieur Carnot. Uh, One thousand apologies. No, I hadn't retired. Go on. What? My car? Where? Now, the chauffeur. His name and description, please. Ah, yes. Oui. And now, the murdered man in the rear seat. Who was he? That was Reynold, a bank messenger. Why? Why? Robbery, of course. He was carrying a million dollars worth of my bonds. A million in bonds? Sacre bleu. Why, robbery, of course. As plain as the nose on your face. Pardon, monsieur, on my face. Well, what issue were they? Metallurgic. Oui. Oui, monsieur. Je comprends. Monsieur Carnot, deeply as I regret to ask it. Oh, don't bother to apologize. Of course I'll come down. As soon as I telephone my bankers in Paris. This is the most confounded outrage I ever heard of. 
Allô? Allô? Good night, monsieur. What did he say? He was most unhappy. Donnez l'ordre d'arrêter un chauffeur nommé Ludwig Kraus. Trente deux, cheveux bruns, taille moyenne. Oui. I've given the alarm for the arrest of the chauffeur. Can I ask a question, please? Of course. Mr. Karnoff lose metallurgic bonds? Why, yes. Observe, please. Report by bank mentioned bonds of same name. Gee, Pop! Please permit Monsieur Joubert to interpret same. It is incredible. Metallurgic bonds, $25,000 of them, were offered for sale at the bank by Monsieur Albert Roger, bartender at the Imperial Hotel. The bank purchased same? He makes the report to us. Should a bartender be so wealthy? No. So they say to him, come back tomorrow. I am slowly confusing. Present case, like too many cocktails, make very bad headache. Uh, perhaps uh, bartender provide remedy for same. Bon, we shall see. Hello. One moment, please. You recognize the same? That's the car we saw at the scene of the murder. Sapristi! Voila! Where is he? Savez vous quel est le propriétaire de cette voiture? Oui, monsieur, Mademoiselle Evelyn Gray. Aha! The woman in the case. Surveillez cette voiture. Oui, commandant. Allô? Mademoiselle Evelyn Gray, she is in? I will find out, Monsieur Joubert. 319, Silver Blaine. There is some trouble, Monsieur. I shall also wish to speak with privacy with your bartender, Monsieur Rogers. But he's not here. He is off duty. He will not get far. Trouvez Rogers. Amenez le moi. Mademoiselle Gray does not answer, Monsieur. The key to her room, if you please. But, Monsieur, I assure you, Mademoiselle is quite respectable. And who am I to doubt? I suspect her only of murder. Good evening, gentlemen. Monsieur Savon. Thousand pounds. I should have answered the door more promptly. I did not know you were so impatient. We were looking for the suite of Mademoiselle Gray. This is it. Evelyn, you have guests. Monsieur le chef de police and friends. How nice. Won't you come in? Merci, Mademoiselle. Oh, I am so sorry to make this intrusion. I, I call you on the telephone. There is no answer. Did it not ring? It did. It did? Does a desire for privacy usually result in a police investigation? I quite understand. Mademoiselle, the white horse is in front of the hotel. It is yours. Why, yes, it is, Explain, but Explain, uh... please, the reason for which you drive on the Nice road two hours ago. The road to Nice? Oh, you must be mistaken. Monsieur Joubert, is this an official investigation? Oui, monsieur, of a murder. A bank messenger was killed while carrying bonds of great value. On the road to Nice, where Mademoiselle Gray's car was observed by Monsieur Chan. It's a scene of the crime. I'm afraid you were mistaken. It's the same car, all right, Miss Gray. Oh, that's ridiculous. Miss Gray's is not the only car of that model on the Riviera. But I'm sure that the... Uh, so sorry. Number one son possibly make error in identity of car. Excuse, please. You are owner of walking stick? Yes. Don't tell me that was also noticed on the scene of the crime. Newly born scratches indicate stick might have been present and used to scrape away footprints. I'm sorry to disillusion you. 
But you evidently don't know that one of the pleasures of carrying a stick is to occasionally poke it in hedges and gravel paths. Habit very delightful, but damaging. Monsieur Savran speaks the truth. I myself always dig the walking stick into the flower bed. Forgive ignorance. But uh, ladies on Riviera also indulge in similar pastime? I don't understand. Heels on beautiful slippers denote recent burial in soft earth. Please note, left heel. One rhinestone abscond from same. Superb, Monsieur Chan. I think perhaps we can repair the slipper of Mademoiselle with this little rhinestone at my office. Voila, the fit. It is perfect. Uh, perhaps memory of whereabouts now refreshed? Quite. It was my car you saw. See, Pop, I told you there was a woman in it. If you please, will you explain? I left the casino about 10 o'clock to take an hour's drive before returning for an engagement I had. On the road to Nice, I saw what I thought was an accident and stopped. There was a dead man in the car. Just then, two men came along the road. I, I was frightened. I thought they'd killed the man, so I drove away before they reached me. Excuse, please. If you thought men approaching on road murderers, why stop to rub out own footprints? The missing chauffeur could have done that. You were not in car with young lady? No. When you drive away, did you not return to the casino? I, uh, I know I came directly to the hotel where I happened to meet Monsieur Savarin. Ah, and why did you not make the report to the police? I advised her not to become involved, Monsieur Joubert. Has my chauffeur Lubick been found yet? No, Monsieur Kanoff. What are you doing here? Trying to convince Monsieur Joubert that neither Mademoiselle nor myself is a criminal. What is their connection in this? Mademoiselle was on the Nice road when the crime takes place. And Savarin was with her. He does not admit same. Of course not. But he had the best motive in the world for being there. Your imagination is magnificent, Karnoff. Now, if you are through questioning Miss Gray, I suggest that you allow us to leave. One moment, please. Engagement you did not keep at Casino was with whom? With Mr. Chase. That's right. I was still waiting for her when Mr. Karnoff phoned and told me to meet him here. I heard them make the appointment earlier in the evening. But aside from that, what bearing is all this on the case? Please, to begin at the commencement, you have the description of the stolen bonds, yes? Right here. That's the messenger's receipt. It contains a list of every bond in the shipment. Merci. Who beside honorable self knew of bond shipment? Gordon, my secretary here, my wife, and the bank messenger. And naturally, the chauffeur, Ludwig. Ludwig, of course! He might have given you suspicion in some way. No, I can't think of anything. Wait a minute. He was telephoning someone just before he left for Nice with the bank messenger. Aha! Now we arrive in the vicinity of somewhere. With whom did he have the talk? I don't know. We will trace the call. I can save you the trouble. Ludwig telephoned me. You! That explains everything. This man would go to any lengths to prevent my bonds from reaching Paris. A sail on the bus would have wiped him out. But, Monsieur Carnot... Ludwig was your spy and accomplice in the murder of Renault, the messenger. Carnot, be careful what you say. Monsieur Savarin. I admit buying information, but I don't deal in murder. Hey, and you confess to bribing Ludwig. I bought it's information. It's the same it's thing. Will it's you stop understand. mumbling and do something? He kills a man, ruins me by stealing a million dollars in bonds, and you don't even arrest me. Monsieur... Carnot, I warn Monsieur. you. Monsieur! I am the police. I will make the accusation. Now. The interruption, please. Stone and bonds were insured against theft? Naturally. If bonds insured, please explain how ruin possible because of robbery? Merci, monsieur. It is obvious that Monsieur Carnot has his own reasons for directing suspicion on others than himself. Do you mean you're accusing me? You can't do this. We are American citizens. Hey, vous Hey, what's the big idea? Well, who, who's in charge, anyhow? I am in charge. And the large idea is you are wanted for questioning. About what? This afternoon, you attempt to sell to the bank three metallurgic bonds. We have the report here. Tonight, the messenger of Monsieur Karnoff is assassinated, and bonds of the same issue stolen by theft. 
Well, what's that got to do with me? May I see the report on this man? For what reason you tried to sell these bonds today? Well, I needed the money. Ah, perhaps you go on a little trip? No, I like it here. Possibly gentlemen would tell how he acquired bonds? That's my business. The man is right. After all, he tried to sell his bonds hours before mine were stolen. They couldn't possibly have been part of my shipment. Comparison of numbers on bank report and messenger's receipt might prove interesting. Ah. Out! I'm on fire! Okay. Oh. Okay. Next time, must buy asbestos pants. Set it down. Just scandal. Quelle honte. Monsieur, if you must throw the matches, aim for the ashtray. Now, at what had we arrived? Checking of bond numbers? Ah, yes. Supper leap a pencil receipt. It is gone. Gone? Well, who has it? Search me. I will search everybody. Uh, one moment, please. Useless to search for bank receipt. Obviously, fire started to destroy same. No, the key some up for his safe. Well, who is going to admit the guilt? You're wasting time. No one here will admit anything. Find my chauffeur, Ludwig. Let him do the talking. Hello? Ah, bon. Eh bien, merci. Ludwig has been found. Good. Bring him here and question him. That, Monsieur Carnat, is impossible. Ludwig was found in a small marsh near the scene of the crime. He is dead. Hello. Oh. Yes. I'm alone. It was a nice little trick you pulled on me, wasn't it? Al, I'm sorry. I... I had to take them. You know I was in a jam. But that's impossible. I haven't that much money here. That's a new little double-crosser. I want that dough, see? I don't care how you get it. Only you make it by noon or I'm talking. What do you want? Just a little talk about those bonds of yours. Well, I told the police all I know. You didn't tell them anything. The bonds you tried to sell were among those I gave the messenger. I remembered the numbers the minute I saw that report. Are oh, you crazy? Besides, why didn't you tell that cop about it if you're so sure? I have my own way of handling this. When I first checked my list, those bonds were missing. In a few minutes, they turned up very conveniently for someone. Where did you get them? I bought them. You're lying. Who gave them to you? Nobody. I tell you, I bought them. Then you still have them. All right, I'll buy them from you and pay you double what they're worth. Well, I... I haven't got them right here. That's the first time you've told the truth. And I'd advise you to stick to it, Rogers, or you'll find yourself in a nasty situation. Oh, yeah? Well, maybe I wouldn't be alone. I might say a lot you wouldn't want to hear. You might, but I don't think you will. Good night. It is the great honor for the hotel to stay here, Monsieur Shine. 
The Imperial is the home of all the famous who visit Monte Carlo. Thank you so much. Mr. Severin, he lived here a long time? Oui, monsieur, many years. He is a fine gentleman. Yes. Very sad, he is suspected by police as criminal. Monsieur Severin, the criminal? Oh, it is not possible. Share same belief. Perhaps would help clear honorable gentleman's name? I am at your service. Would like record of his telephone calls this evening. Ah, he needs what you call the alibi. Yes. One moment, monsieur. Here are the calls. There were two of them. The first one is made by me at 8 o'clock for Monsieur Savarin. He directed me to charter a plane at Nice for Paris. What is time of departure? He changed his mind. The second call is to Nice Airport at 9.30 when he cancels the plane. Thank you so much. Good night. Bonsoir, Monsieur. Oh, oh, gee, Pa, what time is it? Where are we? Are we following a clue? Uh, yes. Directly to pajamas and bed. Uh, monsieur a décidé. One moment, please. Can assist in negotiating one order of waffles without danger of arrest. Uh, why don't you have strawberries and cream and ham and eggs, Pop? That's what I'm having. Please, prefer waffles. Uh, J'aurai uh, fraise à la crème, oeuf au jambon, et il aura waffles. S'il vous plaît, monsieur. Waffel. Oh, je ne comprends pas. <laughs> uh, please. One picture still worth 10,000 words. Waffle, please. You know waffle. Ah. Waffel. Thank you so much. Waffel. Gee, I'm glad he understood. I'm certainly hungry. Uh, excitement of last night also have no effect on appetite of young lady. You know, Pop, she never did explain about those footprints. Now, I've got a theory that she and the bartender, Al Rogers... Good morning, monsieur. Good morning. Oh, good morning, Mr. Joubert. I didn't recognize you out of uniform. Oh, the uniform. I only wear him on the most state occasion. Like the visit of your papa. Mm. Ah, merci. I have had own breakfast? Yes, but I do not enjoy it. The eyes, all night long, they have not shut up. I am very depressing. Perhaps the uh, bright sunshine bring forth solution. Note. Young lady, keep appointment. Ten hours late. For once, even the search for the woman is not the pleasure. The head is filled with the bumblebee. Buzz, buzz, buzz. Have remedy in luggage. Prescription of ancient Chinese doctor. Uh, please, obtain safe. Sure, Pop. It'll fix you up, all right. Voila. Voilà. Very appetizing. Thank you so much. Well, Pop, I hope you enjoy the breakfast you drew for yourself. I'm humbly uh, eating own words. The cream, please. Really, darling, you're not very good company this morning. After all, last night wasn't very pleasant for me, you know. You still haven't explained about Savarin. But I told you what happened. I met him in the lobby quite by accident. Oh, now, Gordon, what's wrong with you? It isn't me, it's, it's Victor. He's pretty badly upset about Ludwig selling information to Severa. Mm. Yes, I can imagine. No, he doesn't seem to trust anyone. Even you? Well, he knows about you and me. But when he saw you with Severa last night. How ridiculous. 
So I tried to tell him that. Evelyn, promise me you won't see Savarin anymore. Of course, silly. He means nothing to me. There. Does that make you feel better? I'm sorry, but... It just seems that I resent anyone else being near you. Oh, darling. Sometimes you sound like a little boy. Well, let's not talk about it anymore, huh? All right. Meet me here for cocktails at five? It's a date. Well, it must be running along. It's going to be a busy morning for me. Victor's pounding the devil out of Severin on the stock market today. Goodbye, dear. Goodbye, darling. Sell them in 10,000 share lots. And offer 5,000 Burma timber at the market. Hold the line a moment. Oh, come in, Evelyn. Oh, never mind. I know I can't afford to take any further losses, so do as I tell you. Good. Keep in touch with me and go to any extreme to hold the market up. Oh, well. Uh, you saw Gordon? Yes. And? I'm afraid that source of information is closed from now on. What do you mean? Carnap is suspicious of me. Gordon's jealous of you. We should never have been seen together in public. How's the market going? Badly. The surety company gave Karnoff immediate coverage on his stolen bonds. Their theft didn't cripple him at all. I've got to do something, anything to stop him. You've already done everything possible. Wait a minute. Last night, I saw Madame Karnoff in the bar downstairs, alone. She was having a very confidential talk with Rogers, the bartender. The same chap the police dragged into the inquiry. You think that, uh... Perhaps. I could be sure, if I only knew what they were talking about. Maybe I could find that out. Fine. Rogers is probably on duty right now. Something strong. I'm all in after that session with the police last night. Ah, don't let them get you down, lady. You certainly weren't afraid of them. I think it's terrible the way they try to drag you into it. <laughs> they got nothing on me. But there's a lot I could say if I wanted to. Excuse me, lady. Hello. It's you. Yeah, I've been waiting for your call. Yeah? Yeah. The sooner the better. Yeah. Okay.
Number one son evidently sailed to Honolulu for ancient headache remedies. Oh, do not worry. He probably forgets to come back, eh? Oh, when I was so young, I often forget. Particularly when I meet with a girl. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Ceci vient d'arriver de Nice à l'instant. Ah bon, merci. These are the reports I sent for last night. The first refers to Mademoiselle Evelyn Gray. Age 24. Née à Londres. Célibataire. Uh, so sorry. But uh, cannot solve mystery of French language. Oh, pardon. I make the translation. Uh, age 24. Born in London. Unmarried. Occupation. Mannequin. Left position in April. Since then, living expensively in Monte Carlo with invisible income. Perhaps stolen bonds help pay hotel bill. You have said something. Ah, here we have Monsieur Rogers, the bartender. Age 35, born in Chicago. Arrested twice for petty larceny. No conviction. Occupation, vaudeville dancer. Appeared in French music halls in 1936. Since employed as bartender in Vichy and Monte Carlo. Very doubtful. Petty larceny mouse. Attack millionaire lion. Ah, but perhaps the mouse drink too heavily of his own cocktails. And then become not afraid of the leon. <laughs> Possible. Uh, anyway, we make the investigation. Aha, listen to this. At 8 o'clock this morning, Madame Karnoff bring jewelry to the pawn shop in Nice and borrow 750,000 francs. In American money, how much, please? Uh, $25,000. Very strange. Same amount, bartender asked for bonds. Ah, uh, you think there is a connection? Perhaps. I cannot make the tail and head of it. The lady has a rich husband, but no money. The bartender has no money, but has rich bonds. Now, what is the answer? Questions are keys to door of truth. Eh? Ah, mais oui. We speak first with the bartender. Monsieur Rogers. Well, he left about 10 minutes ago, right after he got a phone call. Give me the telephone. I will trace the call. <laughs> Hello? Donnez-moi la surveillante. Ici, Monsieur Joubert, chef de police. Faites-moi savoir qui a appelé Monsieur Albert Rogers à l'Hôtel Imperial il y a 10 minutes. You perhaps hear Monsieur Rogers say where he goes? Yes, his hotel. Other people present when telephone call arrive? Why, yes. But I didn't know any of them except Miss Gray. She's a guest here. Thank you so much. Ah, bon, merci. The telephone call, it came from... House of Mr. Karnoff? Oui, Monsieur Chan. And they meet at the hotel of Monsieur Rogers, yes, no? Perhaps now we catch lion in mousetrap. Or lioness. We shall see. Hello. Monsieur l'agent, vite, vite au secours. Il y a un cambrioleur qui essaie de rentrer par la fenêtre. Oui, madame, oui. Que c'est vous, hein Le 
Enter near base of brain. Body still warm. We'll search the room. Aha! Uh -huh. He was packing the clothes. For the escape, perhaps. Tonne de Brest! The chain! The bones metallurgic! The stolen shipment! One million dollars. Everything is now clear. The bartender steals the bonds and commits the murders. Then he becomes full of fright. He knows he cannot escape the police chain I draw so tight around Monte Carlo. So what does he do? He takes the pistol, point him here, makes the suicide. Voila, the case, it is now finished. Contradiction, please. Only Roger's finished. Case still open. Come on. Uh, note. Bullet enter head behind left ear. We? Oui. Also gun found in left hand. We? Oui. Yet uh, position of coffee cup and pot indicate victim right handed. It is too true. Obviously, the left hand does not make the suicide for the right handed man. But the bonds, Monsieur Chan, do they not prove he is the thief? Prove only that thief was here. And plant your bones and your gun on dead men who cannot defend self. Regard, chair overturned. In struggle to avoid murder. Why could this not happen to someone else? For 25 years there is no murder in Monte Carlo. And then three people are killed, pip, pap, poof, like that. I am humiliating. Would be interesting to learn identity of person who telephoned Mr. Rogers. I will have my men take the photograph of this room and remove the body. Then we go to the Carna Villa and make the questions. Uh, humbly suggest Mr. Severin and Miss Gray also present. I hope they are not also dead. Soon we have no suspects left. One moment. Look. My men told you to come here, mademoiselle. Your men? No, I drove out with Monsieur Savarin. Savarin? Where is he? In the house with Monsieur Carnot. C'est terrible. Come, we have not a moment to lose. That's enough, Savarin. Now, you apologize for your remarks concerning my wife. Understand her? You are all right, Monsieur Carmel? Well, of course I'm all right. What do you want? A small talk, Monsieur, with your wife. You can ask me any questions you have in mind. My wife knows nothing whatever about last night. Unfortunately, necessary to question, fair lady, about today. Pardon, madame. But why did you this morning make the appointment to meet Monsieur Albert Rogers at his hotel? I warn you, Joubert, your insinuation is an insult. Truth cannot be insult. Unfortunately, we have traced telephone call. But... Also, we have the report from a certain pawn shop. The denial is useless. Yes, I suppose it is. I went to that pawn shop to raise money for Al Rogers. He... he was blackmailing me. Has been for months. Explain, please, nature of club held overhead. I... I married Al Rogers seven years ago. It was a horrible mistake and we separated. Then I lost track of him. But several years later, I heard he had divorced me. I never knew that was untrue until he found me here and started his threats. Don't worry, dear. 
My wife has nothing further to say. No, Victor. I want to go on. Last week, Rogers demanded more money than I had. So I... I took three of my husband's metallurgic bonds from the safe. Then Gordon, my brother, told me that these were the bonds they were sending to Paris. I was afraid Victor might find out what I had done. I tried to get them back from Rogers last night, but he refused. So I stole them from his room. He found out immediately, of course, and gave me until noon today to make good. You give Mr. Rogers money this morning? No. I... I went to his hotel, but he... Ah! Ah! I found the murderer. It's Rogers, the bartender. I followed him. I saw him packing his luggage. He's going to leave town. If you hurry, you can still catch him. Unfortunately, Mr. Rogers already departed on long journey. He got away? He has collapsed with death. Dead? Rogers is... Oh, Victor. All of you. Don't look at me like that. I didn't kill him. I didn't kill him. He was dead when I got there. He'd fought with someone. The furniture was upset. It is possible, madame, for a woman to have done that. You pay him the blackmail, yet you fear this is not the end. He will demand more and more. But there is one way to stop his talking forever. You blundering idiot. She couldn't have committed that murder. Why are you so certain? Unless you commit the crime yourself. If you discover this scandal, you also have the motif. You're insane. I never saw Rogers but once, and that was last night in your office. Contradiction, please. Caretaker at hotel of unfortunate bartender. Testify you visit Rogers last night after inquiry at police office. All right. All right, I'll admit that. But today, I haven't been out of this house. There's Gordon, my secretary. He'll verify that. That's right. Mr. Karnoff and I had breakfast together. I was with him until 10 o'clock when I left for the bank in town. And Rogers was killed between 10 and 11. At which time, Monsieur Savarin and myself were having a most interesting conversation in this room, which caused me to remind myself. For what reason do you make the visit here today? I don't believe I have to answer that. There is much you must answer to. I've given you a complete account of my actions. Correction, please. Explain why. Last night at 8 o'clock, you telephoned Nice for private aeroplane to Paris. And why at 9.30, soon after the murders, you make the second telephone call and cancel the order for the plane? Very well. After Ludwig phoned, I made arrangements to fly to Paris to defeat Monsieur Karnoff's plans. I was on the way to Nice airport when I saw his automobile with a dead man in it. I thought I might be suspected of the crime if I left Monte Carlo. So I returned and canceled the plane. Why did you not tell the truth last night? If I had admitted being on the Nice road, you would probably have arrested me. Excuse, please. You drive to Nice alone? No. Mademoiselle Grey drove me in her car. It is very fast and I was in a hurry. Then you didn't meet him by accident after all. Oh, please, Gordon, I can explain Enough. Where... We have no time for the level squarel. Your automobile, mademoiselle, it intrigues me. Six months ago, you were a poor mannequin in a London dress shop. Yet today, you possess a fast automobile worth a small fortune. Just what are you trying to insinuate? You do not have the income, yet you have the jewelry, the furs, the automobile. May I remind you, mademoiselle, there are no Christmas trees in Monte Carlo. It would seem that the cost of mademoiselle's furs is more important to the police. And, Monsieur Chan, than the capture of a murderer and the recovery of Monsieur Karnoff's bonds. <laughs> Uh, so sorry for poor memory. Lee, uh, please obtain evidence from honorable policeman in car outside. Okay, Pop. I hope your evidence will be of more importance than Joubert's ridiculous questions. Monsieur, I demand your apology. And I demand that you send to Paris for someone capable of handling this case. Here it is, Pop. Well, that's my bag. The one the bonds were in. The ones they are still in. But where... Where did you find it? In room of murdered bartender. Uh, Lee, you locked bag? No, it was locked when I got it. I'm so sorry. Can unlock same? Oh, yes. Gordon, give me the key. They're all here. Excuse, please. 
original shipment contain one million dollars? Why, yes. So sorry to disappoint. But we check bonds while driving here. 200,000 still missing. Well, I can't understand that. You'd better check them, Gordon. Perhaps you made a mistake. It is possible. But if Secretary's search unsuccessful, suggest you look in own safe. Just what are you driving at? Missing bonds, possibly placed in safe by murderer, who also plant bag in room of unfortunate Rogers to convict him and end case. Come, come, monsieur, the safe, if you please. I have more metallurgic bonds in my safe, but how could you possibly identify them as the missing ones? By numbers on bank messenger's receipt. Oh, nonsense. You know, that was destroyed in your office. Contradiction, please. You place a receipt in pocket, then start fire to avoid search for same. Now, please, restore to hands of police. Merci for this. And now, an explanation. That receipt proved that Roger's bonds were really mine. Finding that out, would naturally have led you to my wife. For the moment, I will accept that. And now, Monsieur, the safe. You will check these numbers with those bonds. Right, Victor. These are part of the stolen bonds. Who, beside the Honorable Secretary, possess key to bag? I do. Well, that is, I did. I gave mine to Reynolds, the messenger. Beyond a doubt, the small key discovered in his purse. Then only you and messenger possess keys? Why, yes, I guess so. Then you are murderer. Why? You're crazy. Ordinary thief would break lock on bag or cut leather to open same. You made one mistake when you leave bag in Mr. Rogers' room. You open it with key. That doesn't prove anything. Why, anyone could open that lock with a, with a hairpin. Impossible also to open safe with hairpin and replace bonds. Why would I do that? If I'd taken the bonds, I'd have sold them, wouldn't I? Not if bonds stolen to prevent discovery of previous theft. Mystery of young lady's expensive luxuries now explained. Months ago, you steal bonds from employer's safe to buy affection of former mannequin. Last night, when danger of exposure arises, you commit murders, then replace in safe enough bonds to conceal former robberies. Today, you go to Hotel Regal, plant evidence in Mr. Rogers' room, then murder him when he returns to unexpectedly find you. I didn't, I tell you. I didn't do it. I didn't. The same gun was used in each crime. That isn't true. Rogers was shot with a different gun. Thank you so much. Only police and murderer could know same. Gordon, you didn't do it. You couldn't have. Yes, I did, all right. For a lying little cheat. I stole for you. I gave you presents because I'd like to see you look more beautiful than anyone else. And you let me think you're in love with me. Savannah, that's who you were really in love with. You were just using me. Using me to get information for him and laughing at me behind my back. Well, someday there's going to be a payoff. And it's going to be my turn to laugh. <laughs> Unfortunate young man, perhaps better off. We. Oui. Mademoiselle Gray, suppose a penalty of Monaco makes no accusation against you, but due to your connection with this case, I must insist you leave Monte Carlo within 24 hours. I understand. Evelyn, is there something I can do? Ah, yes, Monsieur Savard, there is. I make the suggestion you perhaps accompany Mademoiselle as she leaves Monte Carlo. 
Ce trip will be more pleasant if you make it together. Well, now that your papa wins the honors at Monte Carlo, I suppose you will win the grand prize at the Paris Exposition. We'll be facing greatest mystery if uh, award given to Offspring's painting. Oh, gee, Pop, it isn't that bad. Say, that's the same cab we had last night. Imbécile! Pourquoi ne laissez-vous pas cette ruine au garage? Mais, monsieur le commissaire, maintenant, c'est une merveille. J'ai une nouvelle bougie. He says he has the new spark plug. Uh, car with new spark plug, like uh, flea on puppy dog, make both most active. For his sake, I hope so. It is with the lead in the heart, I say au revoir, my good friend. Merci so much. Goodbye. Merci, monsieur. Au revoir, monsieur Joubert. Goodbye, monsieur Lee. Regarde, Denis, c'est vite, et cette fois, pas de peine. Monsieur Bouchon. 